We have recently invented a new class of lasers based on gas-filled hollow optical fibers. And so I think it's just really cool that we actually made a laser work that nobody's ever made before. What makes them different is the fact that they're confined inside these hollow optical fibers. Now what we've done is instead of putting a gas in a tube, we put it into a ball, photonic crystal fiber like the one that I'm showing here. And those fibers have the advantages. You could put something in the fiber and have light interact with the thing in the fiber, in this case a gas, over a very long interaction length without a significant loss of that light. And we're pumping this laser in the near infrared uh, at 1.5 microns. This is a light wavelength that is um, just invisible to the human eye. So this work is funded by various agencies in the Department of Defense. Um, we've had some money from the Army, some money from the Air Force. The lasers they use now for ranging is at a wavelength that can basically damage your retina. So what I mean by ranging is if they want to track or know the distance of a target, basically you shine, a, you send a pulse that goes through the air, reflects off the target, comes back, and they know the speed of light, the speed of that pulse in the air, and that gives them the distance from, from where the source is to the target. And so what they're interested in is having a laser that's powerful enough to do ranging that will not do significant eye damage. Our research is currently done in collaboration with a team of investigators led by Wolfgang Rudolph at the University of New Mexico and by Feta Benabid at the University of Bath in the UK. The optical fibers that we're using for this project are not available commercially. They're created at one research lab in the world and that's at the University of Bath. At first we thought we could do this uh, with a CW laser, meaning a laser that is on all the time at lower powers. but um, after some modeling by Wolfgang Rudolph, we figured out the amount of optical pump power required to achieve that was higher than we had in the lab at the time. And instead, we realized we might be able to do this with a pulsed pump laser source. And so Andrew Jones packed up our fibers, our vacuum systems, and carried them to New Mexico where we combined them with the pump lasers in the lab in New Mexico, and we demonstrated this laser for the first time. Got our detectors aligned just right, and uh, sure enough, we see a little blip on the oscilloscope, a little boop in time, indicating that we there's some light there, and so that was really exciting. That was the first indication that something was working, but seeing this thing actually work is where the work really began. Um, yeah, we got it to work, and that was great, and a lot went into actually getting to that point, but then after that, we wanted to, of course, characterize it better, understand it. We have recreated all of that here at K-State, so we now have our own pump source. We've also demonstrated this laser in hydrogen cyanide gas synthesized by Professor Chris Levy and his research group here in the chemistry department. And so we've been able to do uh, much more repeatable, more quantitative measurements of this laser, and we are still working toward that CW laser that we think will be extremely useful for these applications we've talked about. It's been a really great experience being part of a research group like this. I'm a, I'm a working physicist. I want to show to graduate students and students, undergraduates, to provide them the opportunity to do work in my lab and to learn what it's like to be a real physicist working in a real laboratory environment. And we have that right here.